What is up and welcome back to 24 Minutes of Not A24, the podcast that takes a look at movies outside of the A24 library, literally 24 minutes at a time. I am Ethan Simi. And I am Ben Lahorn. Uh, this week on the pod, we are chasing down the Black Pearl as we talk about Pirates of the Caribbean, the Curse of the Black Pearl. Yes, Pirates of the Caribbean. We have officially switched. We are done with Mission Impossible. That was our very first franchise of the Patreon. And now we're on to uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Blacksmith Will Turner teams up with eccentric pirate Captain Jack Sparrow to save his love, the governor's daughter from Jack's former pirate allies who are now undead. Honestly, that's quite a tagline for IMDb. That's, really I feel like that is. packs a lot of info in there. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's like a long elevator pitch. That's a very long ride for sure. It really is. Um, okay, so this is my franchise that I picked. So now that we're moving away from Mission Impossible, we were obviously building toward Dead Reckoning Part 1, um, and now we went on to something else. So I chose a five-movie franchise in Pirates of the Caribbean. Ben, you are going to be choosing the next kind of five movie, uh, quote unquote, franchise. We're going to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of outside of the mold a little bit, but we have some really cool movie releases coming up that we're kind of gearing towards. So basically every five movies, we're going to switch up the franchise, right? And 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 do something new. Pirates is the first one. Um, obviously, we are still on our 24 minute timer. This is the yeah. Patreon. Uh, so if we go over 24 minutes, we will have a punishment like we have done in prior weeks that have been fucking brutal to be honest (laughs) it's been so rough just like re-listening to fallout again and just for myself the instant hiccups i got i was like oh my god that sucked that was like 20 (laughs) plus minutes of just hiccups it was awful i pulled a clip and i tweeted it and uh or by the time this pod comes out i will have tweeted it that just is is the spinning that it lands on the 10 and I'm just like, we're fucked. And I just yeah. felt that in my bones, in my soul. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> um, yeah. So we have 24 minutes. So we're going to talk about Pirates of the Caribbean, uh, Curse of the Black Pearl, starring Johnny Depp, Orlando Bloom, Kira Knightley, came out in 2003, two hours and 23 minutes long. Put a pin in that, Ben, because I definitely want to come back to that. Yeah. Nominated for five Oscars. Nominated for five fucking Oscars. That's insane. It's insane to me. It's so crazy. We've got best actor in a leading role, Johnny Depp. Best makeup, best sound mixing, best editing, and best VFX. Obviously, this was back when sound mixing and editing were split into two separate categories at the Oscars. Directed by Gore Verbinski, uh, which, looking at his IMDb, is probably one of the weirdest, strangest slates like outside of uh, maybe a handful of people he's got mouse hunt the weatherman the ring he def he, he did the curse of the black pearl he did dead man's chest at world's end rango and the lone ranger the yeah. johnny depp live action disney uh lone ranger that was the last movie that he made and that was like almost 10 years ago that was like eight years ago or something and that thing is i think literally statistically the biggest bomb at the box office ever is that true? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. Um, I mean, the ring is a solid horror movie, you know, yeah. obviously it's like a remake of the Japanese film, but I think he handled that really well. Uh, he's also, I don't, I don't know if you remember this or not, but the old Budweiser commercial of the frogs where they're all no. like, cro- yeah, I, f- I thought you might be too young for it, but like <laughs> all three of them croaked like bud wise and er. And it swept America. Let me tell you, it is <laughs> fucking insane that it did. But I think it was, there was like a Super Bowl commercial and everything. Like, it's crazy that he directed that because that's like, that's a pretty notorious uh, um, commercial for those of us that are over 30, I guess. I don't know, yeah. but it's insane. Uh, but yeah, I, doing like Mouse Hunt and the Mexican, like, yeah, what the a, Mexican, crazy. Yeah, so what a nuts. wild, what a wild stat sheet. Um, couple more things i I wanted to say before we get going on this the pirates franchise has grossed over four and a half billion dollars worldwide there are five of these movies like i said a new one hasn't come out in quite a while like this was i mean you talk the first one came out in three this is like we're talking 20 years old this movie is 20 years old which is so crazy and then we are supposed to be getting a, a revamp of the franchise with margot robbie set to star um as kind of a a a woman oriented pirates that's been on and off on the rumor mill. So who knows if that's actually going to happen. Um, I had not seen this movie in I, like, I literally don't even know how long. All I know about the pirates franchise is that I saw the last one. 
um, whatever that one's called. I on on Stranger Tides is that the fourth one? I whatever the last one is. I saw it in theaters with Molly, and okay. I was like, this movie kind of rips. And that was I, however long ago. So I don't know anything about the territory that we're about to get into with pirates. I just know like pirates kind of rules, and it was a lot of fun when it was a craze. You know what I mean? I was yeah, I was very curious why you picked this. Um, if you're like a huge fan or just wanted to check it out. Uh I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum where I saw like the first one in theaters. Oh, okay. And I've seen the second one, but that's it. I haven't seen three, four, or five. So those are all gonna be new to me. Uh five was interesting to me though, because you know, obviously Javier Bardem, like he's yes, in sir. it and I'm always stoked to see him. So I'm I'm curious to get to that one, but yeah, that was 2017. So it's been six years since they've done it. Obviously Depp is done. Like I think yep. we learned that a lot through the whole uh, trial with Amber Heard and things like that. So like we're not seeing him anymore, which is fine though. Cause I think honestly, like I was talking to Ashley about this, that like um, Jeff Bridges after doing the big Lebowski kind of became the dude, the dude, you know, yep. like it's just like his personality now his persona and it's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> I think Johnny Depp kind of became Jack Sparrow after this. And it's like, my guy, like, this we got like, to calm down. <laughs> let's pump the brakes here, man. Like we, we don't need like 50 pieces of jewelry every time you go on a talk show and stuff. Like yeah. he's, he's taking it to like the opposite extreme, which is just, it's quite a bit. Um, but yeah, I was, it's good to hear that. I was curious why you picked this. So it's good to know that it, like you had seen one of them in theater. So we're like, we're going to revisit it. But. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a, a a partial revisit. I also think like this this and and my letterbox review says this in in less far less words, but like this franchise I think was like very much on on the beginning front of like let's make big billion dollar franchises. Like the yeah. Pirates movies made a boatload of cash, excuse the pun, but hey. like a ton of money and it lasted for 14 years and they made five of them. Like, and I think I just like missed that boat. And I was, I, I remember like thinking it was cool, but never really getting into it and seeing it. And it just like missed me. So I like kind of wanted to go back and see pirates. Um, I also thought it was a little bit more friendly of a franchise than the purge franchise, which is pretty intense. Um, and I, th I think worse movies. I don't know. I guess we'll have to find out one day. We'll see as we progress in the franchise. We'll see. Can I, can I ask you, um, quickly so this movie is two hours and 23 minutes long mm -hmm. um i believe the fourth one or the third one there is one of these movies so at world's end i think is the third one that movie is two hours and 49 minutes long it is almost three hours in length can i i i feel like from what i've read on letterbox and what i've seen online i feel like i'm in the minor minority here where i'm like all of these movies are just way too fucking long. I don't even care. Like, I just, I don't care if the story's good. They're just too long, in my opinion. Even this one, I loved this one, too long. Yeah, I mean, if you're in the minority, I'm there with you. Because, like, there's, <laughs> these nice. don't need to be over two ten. You know what I mean? No, like, not at all. None of these need to be longer than that. I, I do think it's fine if they're a little bit longer. Like I said, like, it doesn't have to necessarily be under two I think one is, because... like, 2.16. I think one is, like, right in that range. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And it looks like the last one is, is two, two hours and nine minutes. So that's okay. like the sweet spot, I think, um, because we get some great set pieces in these movies yep. and I think it's good to spend time there. Um, we'll, you know, we'll get into some of our favorite moments, the true cinema here, but they do some nice tributes to the ride. I think this is gotta be the most successful movie about a Disney ride. And yeah. they've done quite a few. I, I would imagine like jungle cruise is probably in second now. Um, none of them have really been like fantastic, you know, <laughs> like mm -hmm. they've done Tomorrowland and country bears. And I remember liking Tomorrowland. I'm pretty sure I saw that movie in theaters and I was like, Yo, this, yeah, yeah. I was like, dang, this movie is kind of good. And then uh, now I'm looking back at the reviews. It's like, it was terrible, but I may, maybe I got to rewatch that one. I don't know. We got to do like Disney theme park rides. Maybe, <gasps> maybe we change yeah. the franchise to a Disney theme park ride franchise. Who knows? Oh, we'll see. <laughs> ah! to, let me know by next week. Let's watch. <laughs> I gotta uh, let you know. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I thought there were, this is, I feel it's safe to say this is the best one. Um, sure. And again, like I haven't even seen really the rest of them, but <laughs> uh, it does a really good job. I mean, 
I, I'm blown away that he was nominated for best actor that like it's startling I cannot to me. fathom that <laughs> like that's crazy is, to me I get it I get it that he's legendary for this role and he's like the yeah. perfect person for the role but it's like it's Jack Sparrow it's the Oscars like that just doesn't make sense and maybe that's because we're living in a different like era we're living in a different era of of Hollywood and a different reality now where it's just like that would never happen and maybe 20 years ago that was like holy shit, he did it kind of a thing? Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. It was still, I guess, heartthrob Johnny Depp, like, and <laughs> yeah. he did it. But yeah, I have no clue exactly <laughs> how he got that nomination, but, um, you know, congrats to him. That's fantastic. <laughs> congrats, my guy. You uh, did it. This movie, though, is honestly, so I lived in Brazil for a while, and when I came back, I was taking classes in Portuguese just to like, kind of stay up on it. And we used to watch this movie all the time in Portuguese. It's probably the movie that I've seen the most in Portuguese, wow. uh, which is kind of crazy to even say. Um, but yeah, so like I have, I'm very familiar with this film. Uh, I think they do a good job with everything. Honestly, like it's a, for what it is, it's yeah. really good. Even, I don't know, again, like we'll get into the scenes and stuff like that, but overall I love the set pieces. I think, Gore does a, a really good job. Obviously, he and Deb have this like connection, and I think it works well here. Orlando Bloom is Orlando Bloom. I think he's good as kind of the handsome, cute guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Kira Knightley, I think she's always like pretty solid. So it, I was stoked to to revisit this for sure. Yeah, I think it's like a re- just a really good trifecta of people like in pretty fun roles, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've only got like 12 and a half minutes. So I'm going to kick off our Let's true cinema here. I'm going to I'm going to go with my, my very first one is uh, however cliche you want it to be. It is the introduction of Captain Jack Sparrow when his boat continuously gets smaller and smaller. I think for for me, the movie's great and there's some really, really cool parts and and we'll talk about more of them. but like. That I, maybe it was like because I started the movie a little later in the night. So maybe I had the most energy or the most engagement at that point or like whatever it may be um, a, a slew of like things. But that was the funniest part, in my opinion, yeah. of like we see him and it's like, oh, shit, like he's on this a massive ship and he's a captain and like he's such a badass pirate. And then we zoom out and it's a really small ship and then he gets closer and closer and he's barely above the water. <laughs> yeah. And then he's like, and the guy's like, it's going to cost a shilling to park your boat on the dock. And he's like, how about three shillings and forget the name. I just thought like that, that moment was a perfect Jack Sparrow moment. And I, I laughed out loud. I thought it was great. That's yeah. I mean, I'm glad you picked that. Cause that would have been my first one as well. Like mm. just the way he walks off of like, the ship onto the dock you know what i mean as it's sinking like it's so smooth it's really good um mine is also part of the introduction here i think i have a a few of them that are kind of going to be along those lines of quotes i guess Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. uh and this is when he's kind of captured and i forget the guy's name if he's the constable or something like that he's like you're the worst pirate i've ever heard of he's like (laughs) yeah i've heard of me you know it's just (laughs) like Damn, like it's a real optimistic way to look gotcha. at this man. Like, good job, you know. That was, so I, I like that because again, like even in these dire moments when you think like all hope is lost, blah, 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 he's always kind of funny. He always has like his yep. wits about him. And that was just one of the best lines, I think, is like, but you have heard of me. <laughs> That's true. Can't, yeah. can't deny that. Can't go wrong. There is a there is a part. Um, I guess I'll save it for I say it's in a similar vein. I'll save it for the end in case you pick it. Um I will go with my second one. Um, kind of when we first see um, uh, the the skeleton crew, we kind of we get our first mm. idea that they are an undead crew, and Barbosa is like managing this, and they're cursed by the curse of the Black Pearl, right? In in the title, yeah. Um, and I feel like I didn't I didn't watch the trailer like going into this, but I feel. Like if the trailer was made now and maybe even 20 years ago when the trailer came out, this is like a million percent in the trailer is when he does turn like kind of turn into a skeleton and walks out into the moonlight. And he says, you best start believing in ghost stories, Miss Turner. You're in one. And I just like that was just like a mic drop for me. I was just like, ah, yes, like we did it. You're in a ghost story. You're in pirates. Everybody's undead. Like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's just like kind of fucking rips at that point. You're just like, that's really cool. 
I mean, we literally have the same second one because <laughs> that go. was mine as well. Like it is, it's the best line. Like it it's would, so it would cool. be the end of the trailer for sure. You yes. know what I mean? Like it's and you the watch that and you're line. just like, fuck, I got to watch that movie. That looks so good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like the way he says it. And just the tie in from earlier where she's like, I don't believe in ghost stories. Like I'm mm-hmm. sick of hearing all this stuff before she sees what's going on. Um, but even just to, you know, expand on that a little bit, the reveal of all the people as the ghost people, you know, when they're kind of like coming after her and the fear that she has and realizing that she can't even hurt them. She can't kill them. Like the fear that comes in that, but then ending that scene with that line, it's just like, like you said, it's a mic drop line. 100%. Mm-hmm. It is, is so well delivered. And it's probably the thing I remember the most from this movie. Definitely agree. Um, I, I think any part, I can totally see why it was up for best VFX. Like I, I totally co signed that. I think it was yeah. really quite good for 20 years ago. Like, to have a skeleton crew on on a boat like in the middle of the ocean is pretty impressive especially considering the boat is the black pearl and like it's you know it's tattered and worn and all of these things um i thought it was really cool the the skeleton monkey was pretty dope as well like i like that that the monkey is also cursed yes super crazy um funny part i maybe it's gonna be your third but it's when the monkey comes up and and it towards the end and Barbosa's like, thanks, Jack. And Jack is like, yeah, oh, no problem. Yeah. And he goes, I was talking to my monkey. My monkey's <laughs> name. <Jack." laughs> yeah. I thought it was great. That was pretty funny. Um, okay. So my third part is going to uh, be when Elizabeth, Kira Knightley's character and, and Captain Jack Sparrow have been basically banned to this island by Barbosa. This yeah. is the second time Jack has been on this island. Um, they're drinking rum. They have a massive fire going on. And it's a very, again, like a Leonardo DiCaprio pointing at the screen meme, like they're singing the song. They're singing Yo-Ho, A Pirate's Life for Me, and they're on an island, and they just got done like fighting undead pirates, and like we're living in it. This is great. Mm-hmm. This is really cool, and I liked that just for like the energy and the tone that it captured in that moment was very much of like, oh, I could, t- like, this movie's fun. This is, like, I'm having a great time. Like, we're just, you know, singing pirate hymns and drinking rum. Good stuff. Yep. Yeah, no, I think that's solid. Mine is, is somewhat similar. It, it's not even necessarily a scene. I just wanted to talk about the references to the ride because uh-huh. I think they do a good job of that. Like, there's the guys. I mean, a lot of it happens in I think Tortuga. Um, Tortuga is badass. It's super cool. Yeah, super cool. Uh, so some stuff happens there. Some before I believe, but like, there's the the four guys that are in the prison cell that are like whistling mm-hmm. for the dog, you know, like trying to get their attention. Um, there's like the woman that comes running out of the house, like kind of holding your skirt and the guy chasing behind her. Cause they have that just on a loop, you know, on yep. the ride. I just think a lot of the references they made worked really well. They weren't necessarily heavy handed. Like it wasn't necessarily in your f- face, if that makes sense. Like yep. it was there and you saw it, but it, it's not like we spent a ton of time other than like the guys in the prison, but that also tied in because Jack was there as well. And he's like, you guys are never going to get that dog, which is kind of a funny commentary on it. Cause like, yeah, yeah. they never get the dog in the ride, <laughs> you know? So I just, I want to shout that out. It's not necessarily like a specific true cinema moment, but just, all the nods it gave to to the ride because now when you go back and watch it you're like oh it makes sense like even when the ships are next to each other and like sending shit Cannibals, over you know yeah. yeah all that kind of stuff as you're watching you're like oh i remember that that's way cool that they were able to to do that so uh that's what i want to shout out basically all the references yeah a million percent and and i'm glad that you did because in line with the references is the fact that like they just they just don't make movies like they used to like i know that's like a used line and like we're living in the age of of CGI franchises and all of this crazy stuff and like, you know, things being taken down digitally and replaced and all these things. But it's like, they literally just don't fucking make movies like they used to. Like the amount of practical effects in this movie is pretty jaw dropping. Yeah. And even if, even if a lot of it is VFX, it looks very, very good. And it does not whatsoever like take me out of it. I just try to think of like, what would pirates look like now? Like what would this movie look like now if it came out? this year or last year and every single moment that we get on the ship or looking at the ship or any cannonballs, any massive ex- ship explosions, like all of that would be CGI and yep. it looks so good because it is practical and that is part of the magic. And I think they captured that, right? Like that's part of the magic of the ride. Part of the magic of the movie is like, it's happening. It's really, really happening. Um, Storyline wise, 
I think it gets a little a little convoluted and like we stretch it out a little bit too much of like, mm-hmm. hey, Jack, we're going to send you back to the island and then you're going to go back to Tortuga and then you're going to go back to like where the curse is and the gold and like I get it all, but it's it's also like a lot and I just kind of found myself really wanting to like just spend more time on the ship, like watching them fight undead pirates. I thought that was like the funnest part. Yeah, it, that was very cool. The storyline is it's a lot, um, but I do like some of the aspects of it of how, you know, Elizabeth Swan is like, oh, Elizabeth Turner. And they're like, mm-hmm. oh, this is Bootstrap's daughter. Cool. Let's keep her, you know, that kind of a thing. And if she had just said her real name, you know, they I mean, they may have just killed her, honestly. Who knows? But um, she wouldn't necessarily be in that situation. But I think they tied some of that stuff well together. They're like love for each other that they just couldn't really act on. Um, yeah, like, I mean, when her maid or whatever, it's like, oh, that will turn her though. She's like, okay, you've crossed the line. Like, <laughs> yeah. that's my guy. Stop talking about him. Back you know? Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, okay. Oh, sorry. All right. Got it. Mm-hmm. I've, I know what the line is now. So, um, yeah, no, I know. I, the practical aspect of it, I think, is what separates this so much. And I'm curious to see again, because we will have like 15 years of CG development yeah. and movies becoming so much more CG heavy. I'm curious by the time we get to Dead Men Tell No Tales, like how much were they still able to be practical? I mean, Gore Verbinski, he did Rango. You know what I mean? Like that's an entire yeah. just like animated film, but all done kind of using motion capture and green screen. Cause like, I'm not sure if you're familiar much, but like, I mean, they did the whole thing. They acted it out just in body suits. Oh, I didn't know that. That's and crazy. then they animated it. So all the people are there like in body suits acting out the movie. It wasn't just like voiceover stuff. Mm. Um, and so it's, I think that was a cool thing to do and to try um, for a whole film. So he's not afraid of CG and I'm just curious to see how much more of it we get. Yeah, super, super curious. We'll see. Um, I guess we'll find out if we stick with the Pirates franchise. I don't know. I'll we'll let you know yeah. the night the night before we record next week. And then, <laughs> what to watch? Watch, what to watch? right now. <laughs> <laughs> watch it right now, right now. Um, yeah, you know, I, I do think that there are a lot of cool things. And I think ultimately, like, the fun is, like, Jack Sparrow wins, right? Like, he gets the Black Pearl. He outsmarts yeah. Barbosa. He steals a, a coin to become cursed in order to, like, deal with that whole situation, which I thought was fun. And I love the aspect of the moonlight, right? And like using that during the final fight of them get kind of weaving in and out of the moonlight and becoming undead or or alive, I thought was pretty cool. Um, I mean, there are a lot of fun things. And I do think it's a pretty fun and truthful adaptation of of a theme park ride. And yeah. like you mentioned, they, they do a very, very good job. Um, would this fit in the A24 catalog? It's, it's very like IP heavy. So I, I would say no, but like, I don't, it just seems too big budget for me. Exactly. That's, I would say the same thing. Like the budget alone kind of takes it out of the running in my opinion. Yeah. And like you said, it's, it's all IP and it just doesn't seem like that fits in. I can't imagine we're going to say yes to any of these movies <laughs> for the pirates for sure. Yeah. I couldn't imagine. Um, Like I said, next week on the pod, we will see what we're going to do. It's our Patreon. We make the rules and we'll figure it out. Um, uh, But super fun stuff Um, kind of underway. I had one more question for you. So in Tortuga, when Jack takes Will there and basically um, like coerces, coerces the guy, um, you know, and talks to him and like they figure out this plan of Will and Bootstrap Bill and all of these things. I just remember thinking I wouldn't last a day in Tortuga like oh, that, no. that place would just chew me up and spit me out. I couldn't do it. Could you could you be a pirate, Ben? Because I don't think I could. No, I would just have lost all my money and be homeless without a doubt. If they took me there, it'd be like, yep, I'll, yeah, no, it'd be done, done for sure. Um, <laughs> let us know what you guys thought about Pirates of the Caribbean and the Curse of the Black Pearl. We're on Twitter and Instagram at 24 minutes of 824. Also, you can watch us on YouTube. If you haven't, go back and watch our follow episode. It was crazy. Thanks so much for your support on Patreon. I am Ben Lawhorn. And I'm Ethan Simi. Um, You best start believing in curses because you're in one. Or ghost stories? It's ghost stories. <laughs>